Next is Lynn Warner. Hi, good Hi. afternoon. Good afternoon, members of the Judiciary Committee. I am Lynn Warner, the Executive Director of the Ark of Connecticut, a 57-year-old statewide advocacy organization for individuals with intellectual disabilities and their families. We have 23 local chapters that provide support, services, and advocacy for people with intellectual disabilities throughout Connecticut. And I'm here today to testify in support of Senate Bill 348, an act concerning the videotaping of custodial interrogations as it directly impacts individuals with intellectual disabilities who become involved with the criminal justice system. In general, people with intellectual disabilities get by in life by trying to cover up the fact that they even have a disability and by trying to please the people around them. As a natural result of their disabilities are subject to suggestion and can easily be persuaded and manipulated by others. Police officers and detectives are substantial authority figures and they can have a profound effect on the thoughts and actions of anyone and particularly someone with an intellectual disability, including having him or her confess to a crime they didn't really commit. We deeply believe that videotaped recordings, if videotaped recordings are used by the judge and jury, are used, the judge and jury would be able to see and hear for themselves what went on in an interrogation room, and the second pair of eyes could only improve the reliability of confessions, maintain justified innocence, as well as safeguard police officers from improper allegations. It seems that everyone is better protected. According to a recent report to the Deputy Chief State's Attorney, there are several municipalities in Connecticut who are currently wired with the proper equipment and are recording interviews. The report also states that the majority of these units who are operational are reporting positive opinions of the technology from their officers and detectives. The Ark of Connecticut strongly urges this process to continue and the equipment to be installed in all municipalities. It is important for this committee to also know that the Ark of Connecticut absolutely believes in the innocence of Richard LaPointe, a gentleman with intellectual disabilities. We believe that if the 10-hour interrogation of Mr. LaPointe had been recorded, he would have been never sentenced to pr life in prison plus 60 years for the bu brutal 1989 murder of, Miss, uh, sorry, of Bernice Martin in Manchester, Connecticut. We believe that the real murderer of Mrs. Martin is still running loose while Richard quietly served nearly 20 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. The Ark of Connecticut and its 23 chapters will never walk away from this man, and we will continue to draw your attention to this very important matter again and again until we see it through to completion. Thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Kissel. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, quite often uh, the LaPointe case is raised mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I don't know if he's innocent or he's not innocent, but uh, clearly one of the things that has helped us resolve matters after the fact and sometimes exonerate people that have been uh, falsely convicted is DNA evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we've made a major commitment in the state of Connecticut to get our DNA database up and running. Uh, we're constantly seeking ways to get more samples into the database. Mm -hmm. Is there any DNA associated okay. with the, the underlying crime that, that has been placed into that? And Unfortunately. Is there, any, is there any path re regarding this case that hasn't been pursued? It, well, we're, we're pursuing everything, but unfortunately the usable DNA that was stored before DNA evidence was, you know, in 1989 it wasn't as well widely used. It has all been contaminated and this, the, the DNA that they found that could, that was still stored, that wasn't contaminated was um, too eroded to be um, tested thoroughly. So everything that has been tested has come back inconclusive or non-usable. It, like, it went from one lab to another and when it got stored, um, evidence from another case got piled into the LaPointe case. I mean, if, if this man didn't have bad luck, he would have no luck at all. I mean, seriously, it's been horrible. So we're currently waiting. We've been to um, right down the street, the appeals court, and we're waiting for a hearing from the judges um, from the appellate court, and that's where we are right now. We've been in trials where we've um, advocated for a new habeas, and um, the judge 
said, well, you submitted an 85-page brief that I am not inclined to read. And sat, I mean, that was his statement as we opened the trial. So what do you want me to do with this, he would say. And, and we had testimony and we've had um, recorded um, interviews. And so, like I said, anything that could happen to go wrong for Richard has happened. And so we're waiting to hear. So every avenue possible. We've been trying. Pursue. We've been trying everything. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your cons consistent advocacy, and, and hopefully justice will prevail on the end. And you'll hear from more people today um, in support of Richard. But, And if I may just say on a personal note, um, I'm a wife of an active duty service member who's getting ready for his second tour of duty. And House Bill 6708, anything you guys can do to just kind of move it along and help these folks out. I would say I just want to put that plug in. That's our Veterans Court initiative? Yes. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you.